Well, the only explanation we can provide so far is just what you see here behind me, this vast, open, wide landscape that we're dealing with, with the search and the terrain. Uh, and you're right. We started off in Oklahoma City this morning, uh, pounding on the door of the OSBI, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Um, they have, you know, said to us, look, we, we just can't tell you much right now. Stand by. We'll let you know when there is news. We were hopeful that there might be some development over the weekend, possibly today. Didn't happen. In fact, they said, that they might be able to give us an update this morning. They said they were too busy, so off we went. And we've been driving across the state, uh, and we're just about to come up on the part of the road here on the highway where we're going to hit the spot uh, where the women's vehicle was found. Um, but we want to show you some drone video that we have uh, taken of this very spot where that blue SUV was found on March 30th. And as you can see, when it lifts up and around uh, from that location, that's what we're talking about. Flat, wide, uh, you know, and we've been looking for grid searches. Leland, you and I have talked about missing person cases for decades on the air together. And usually we see grid search. We see canine units. We see a command post. We don't see anything like that right now. We have been told that family and friends of these two women have been told not to talk to the media. They want to keep everything close to the vest understood. But for right now, there are little answers. A lot of people talking about, you know, the family. Let's talk about the ex of the woman who was going to pick up her kids. She was embroiled in a bitter custody battle, uh, Veronica Butler, and we know that she was going to pick up her two kids. I've been going through the court documents that have spanned for years and years about the back and forth with the custody of these two kids uh, between Veronica and her ex, who is reportedly in a drug rehabilitation center right now in Oklahoma City. Um, and the grandmother had custody, and we've been trying to get a hold of the grandmother. Nobody's talking. Uh, so for right now, the OSBI is telling us they are, even though we don't see an investigation going on on the ground, they say that they are conducting searches, but there's not a lot to look around right now. When you look at that, uh, the footage that we're bringing you from the drone, you can see just how difficult this is, Leland. Yeah, it's pretty stunning when you see just how rural and vast um, that area is. Tracy, uh, the Keystone cops screw this one up. So in, in my opinion, no, but I do think, you know, to Laura's point about terrain, so I was a drone operator for quite some time. And the thing is, is an area like this is actually great for covering with drones, quite frankly. You don't have a lot of mountains. You don't have a lot of hilly territory. You don't have really high brush and thick tree canopy. So it's actually pretty easy to cover by drone. The reason I don't think that a command post has been set up is I believe something got them to pull over. This is clearly a targeted um, a targeted attack here because this is a road that is not traveled uh, a lot. So something got them to pull over. And what that tells me is that perhaps they were taken into a vehicle and brought to a secondary location and police already know that, which may mean why there's not a command post and not a canine crew out here. So I don't necessarily think that they have screwed it up. And I actually think that they're asking the family not to talk because they may be investigating members of the family at this point in time. Yeah, you think, at least in my experience, that you want you want family members and possible suspects out there talking because you never know what they're going to say to the media that contradicts whatever else um, is out there. Laura, this goes to an important point, though. Um, if they were targeted, it, it's obvious and horrific. If they weren't targeted uh, and they are the victims of some kind of random crime, in a way, it's even more scary. Uh, have, have the police said about there being a threat to the community? The police have said that there is not an active threat to the community. I did reach out to a private investigator who works this terrain, knows the area well, and says, look, it, yeah, it could absolutely have something to do with a family member. Sure, that's where everybody starts. But also pointed out that this area, because of its vastness, because of the type of terrain we're dealing with, is a is a big area for human trafficking. So there's that. There's obviously drugs and guns uh, going on around this area as well. And we've heard that there was a foul play around, found around the car. So what was it? Was it blood? Was it a broken window? They are not telling us, the OSBI is not telling us exactly what kind of foul play we're talking about. But to Tracy's point, you're right. Uh, we've long also thought maybe somebody was standing on the side of the road. You know, these two women are mothers and they work with the church. The pastor's wife was the passenger. And so 
you know, was there somebody that was standing out on the side of the road as a decoy trying to bring them over? Those are just, it's a list of possibilities that people are talking about. The rumor mill is running rampant out here with all kinds of different scenarios that could be taking place, but we just don't know until the investigators with the OSBI tell us what's going on. They've asked us to hold tight, and I've reached out to the FBI, to my contacts with the FBI, to find out if they're going to get involved. We've reached out to the governor's office. You know, we all want answers, and we want to help find these women and bring them home. Ed, Tracy, last word to you on this. Uh, how is it possible that the the police would not want help if they really didn't screw this up and they they somehow have the triple underwater uh, blindfolded chest move that they found all these things they're just waiting to piece it together? Why wouldn't they want their suspects to make a mistake? So I think it depends. A lot of times what happens in an investigation like this, particularly in areas that, that are rural, you can go into an issue where there's actually too many tips. Um, and then that hinders the investigation in and of itself and takes a, a lot longer um, than what's needed to go through. Also, an investigation like this, Laura was mentioning, you've got several different agencies here. You have individuals in Kansas, you have OSBI, you have the FBI, and you probably have other agencies as well. And so they are all trying to work together. And because they're trying to work together, asking the family at this point in time to not put additional information out there protects all of those agencies mm. uh, in terms of gathering evidence. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.